Hi, my name is Jonathan Pickup. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also click on the notification so you get reminded when I've uploaded a movie. And if you've got any ideas for new movies that you'd like me to make, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. So today I'm going to look at this one here, Working Plane. The Set Working Plane tool. I can click in the middle of an object. I can click at a corner of an object. But I can also use this one here and I can set the position of an object. So I just need to go back to a layer plane so that I don't get confused. So let's go set working plane. So that corner, we're going to go across first, then we're going to go up and it creates a working plane. If I click away from everything and I go working plane, save working plane, let's call this bottom front. That's the bottom front of my building. And I'm also going to create one in the center. I just find it easier to just use this one here. Click in the center. So we're going to right click away from everything. Working plane, save working plane. And this is front center. You might notice I've opened up here a working planes palette. I got my working planes palette from up here. Window, palettes. Uh, there it is there, working planes. A lot of people don't bother to open it, but it's quite handy when you're doing this. If I double click there, let me just go back out of that tool. So back to my selection tool, bottom front, front center, bottom front, and so on. So it's a really convenient way of keeping track of your working planes. If you're doing a complex building, you really need to start saving some working planes so you can reactivate them when you want. I'm going to draw a rectangle. First of all, I'm going to go back to my layer plane. I'm going to draw a rectangle. There it is there. And now I'm going to activate my front center. Now this object down the bottom here, it's not currently at zero, zero. So I'm going to set the bottom right corner to zero, zero. So it's in the middle of my, my object, in the middle of my building. Here, I'm going to change that object to my working plane. And you can see that the bottom corner of it ended up at the middle of my building. So I'm going to start off by creating my object here. There it is there. I'm going to not select it. I'm going to activate my bottom front. Then I'll select my object. Then up to here, choose working plane, and it moves it onto the working plane. But it has kept the same coordinates, these coordinates here. So back to my layer plane. This time I'm going to create an object like this. And I'm going to create a couple of these. One of these I'm going to extrude. OK, so I've got some extruded. So let's go to bottom front. Let's select that one. I can move that one to my working plane. This one, I can't move it to my working plane. So I can do that with planar objects, but I can't do it with 3D objects. Now there is another way to do it, and that's to use your Align Plane tool. Now I'm going to click at this corner here. Now I've got too many snaps on at the moment, so I want to turn some of those off. That should be better. So I want to snap at that corner. I want to come across, go up, and it's moved my object to my working plane. Let's just undo that. Let's do it again. This time I'll go from this corner to there and up to there, and it's moved it the other direction. You notice I've rotated my object. So this is really cool the way that it aligns to the working plane of the object. Let's have a try down the bottom here. So we'll choose uh, align plane. We'll go from that corner to that corner to that corner and then it stuck it on the front of my object. This is a really powerful technique, this ability to move your information with working planes. That's my working plane and you'll notice I get these series of dots. The green dots allow me to rotate my working plane in one direction. The red dots allow me to rotate my working plane in another direction. And the blue dots rotate the other way again. So once you've created a rotator working plane, then you can save that as well. Rotated. So that's my rotator working plane. So let's go back to a 3D view, layer plane up here. I'll draw a rectangle. I'll move that to zero and zero. Now let's activate our working plane. 
rotate it. So now what I should be able to do is to select that rectangle again. So I'm going to a top view, select my rectangle, and then reapply that to my working plane. And you notice it's rotated my rectangle as well. It's rotated to my working plane. So these are really powerful and very flexible. So you can save these and let's go back to layer plane. You can double click here to activate active layer plane as well. So that's just a quick introduction to working planes. I use them all the time. They're really powerful. I like the idea that you can save them. If you've got a complex project, it's a really good idea to name them accurately and store them in your file or save them as you create them because you can always come back to them again and again. If you're interested in the building that you can see on the screen at the moment, this is part of my 3D modeling course. I'm just in the middle of updating it to Victorworks 2021. A lot of things haven't updated, but if you're interested, you can still get my 2017 3D modeling course here at store.archoncad.com slash courses.